Thank you again for joining us. We're continuing on with the Outer Worlds. We're about to leave our first lovely planet here. Let's go on to our ship. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. I can understand not wanting to go back. You didn't seem happy in Edgewater. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? What? You just met me. Why would you want to go into space with a stranger? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. And you talked Miss McDevitt into coming back to town. Maybe one day, Edgewater will have a garden where that cannery once stood. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You've done some kindness hereabouts. I wouldn't mind following somebody like that. I'd be glad to have you along. Pick a cabin, it's yours. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. I can call you Captain now. Ha! I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Uh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Get in, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be back. Power regulator housing. Do 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 do. I'm just gonna slide that in there. Speak with Ada. Ooh, workbench. Bench discovered. Yo. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. Systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Let's get out of here. The unreliable takes flight. Phew! Against all odds, the unreliable takes flight. Okay. All right. Hmm. Nice. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Good. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, 
there you are, hale and hearty, and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. I've been feeling a little lightheaded, uh, so I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Fine. I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. I gotta put it to use, thanks. But you want to explain what the Holographic Shroud is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Why do I need a gadget for this? Couldn't I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy cereal? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. How the hell does a hologram sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. People will actually fall for this? It seems far-fetched. <laughs> the beauty is, they don't expect it. The shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. I'll put it to good use. Thank you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power. But it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it. Let's go to the groundbreaker. Ducking Bay. Pew! Destin Spacer's Choice Travel Advisory. Welcome to the system map. Here you can see all the planets in the system as well as some special points of interest that you may have discovered. 
You can fly to your ship to any location you have unlocked, though there are some landing bays that require special codes and keys before they allow you to land there. Moving between planets is considered extremely dangerous, and all employees are encouraged to remain home or at work. Mission reached. The Groundbreaker. Well, let's go pick up that shroud. Can we talk? Sure, just one sec. Let me get my shroud. Get my shroud on. Holographic shroud. Pick up. A holographic shroud projects a disguise around you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID cartridge for that area. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on site. I'll take that. Yoink! An easy 16k. Alright. What's up? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? What about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Sure, we can head over to the engineering now. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Uh, break's over. Ground break. Yeah, I'll take her. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Ground break. Hmm, we specification machine at your ship. Checking your ship's manifest. Standard procedure. Welcome to Groundbreaker, by the by. Take that. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get to with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. Felix? Going for a stroll around the docking base? I noticed you were in the middle of an argument earlier. Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. I heard you knock someone out with a toss ball stick. The guy insulted my Rizzo's Rangers, alright? You can't just insult my Rangers and expect to get away with it. So, of course, I decked him with a tossball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair-weather fan? Okay, so now, what exactly did you do? The guy never liked me. Always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, 
my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. And that's when you resolve your differences like an adult, right? That's when I broadsided him with a tossball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. You're lucky you're not serving a sentence. You know something? I am lucky. I ought to raise a glass of zero G to my fortune, if I had the bits. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? That's me, Captain of the Unreliable. Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. I never caught your name. I'm Hemator. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around. See you around, boss. Drinking Sapphire Wine. Oh. Customs and inspection right this way. Identification, please. Present Hawthorne ID. Here you go. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. So, I'm stuck here? Not stuck, per se. You could always throw yourself out the airlock. Of course, then you'd find yourself with an exciting new problem. Any idea why my ship was impounded? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. Great. I'll have to go talk with him and straighten this out. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Sure. Wanda Dorset over in Sick Bay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Her shipment? A handful of sand cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Got it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? I'm looking for someone named Gladys. Well, thanks. You'll find her in the rest and go. On your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. What can you tell me about Udom Bedford? He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Sounds like a fun guy. Really likes his cereals, too. Maybe a little too much. Bit of a weird bird, all told. Don't see what's so wrong about liking cereals. They're fun. Udom takes it to an uh, unhealthy level. Seems like there's some tension between the board and the groundbreaker. You noticed, huh? People won't stop yapping about it. What can I say? We're passionate folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top in manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really? They know we can stop their out-system shipments any time we like, and that terrifies them. 
Sounds complicated. Sounds like, yeah. But from where I sit, it's all coming through loud and clear. They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right, so far anyway. Thanks for the info. See you around. Be seeing you. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You're hearing things. There goes Purpleberry Punch. You want a punch? You got your punch right here. <laughs> Those shells. Healthy. Go back to Byzantium, you gold plated bastards. Yeah, no one wants you on Groundbreaker. These stairs are board property. Disperse now, or I'll detain you for trespassing. Oh, real scary. You're really gonna arrest us on our station? Yeah, this is Chief Julie's ship. You don't own shit here. Step back. I'm required by board bylaws to use excessive force. The Mardettes would space you for trying, you... you waste of ocean. Have you seen this man? Empty kitchen discovered. Jeez. There goes XF 411s and an old Yakita 37. You think they'd let me peek at the power plant? The board would like to remind spacers and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted. Junlei Tennyson. I'm captain around here, but chief to my friends. Hope you don't mind the formal introduction. Groundbreaker doesn't see many visitors. Hematar, nice place you got here, chief. No, it isn't. It's a mess. But it's my mess, so I'll take the compliment. Just so we understand each other, I'm the final word on the ship. The Mardits, the crew, the engineers, their family. I hope there won't be any problems while you're visiting. I'll do whatever I can to help you keep the peace. Good. Don't go making trouble, and chances are you won't find any. That's how I like it here. So what brings you to Groundbreaker? I'm curious, even though nine times out of ten, the answer is just passing through. Once I get off impound, I'm bound for Monarch. Interesting. The powers that be paint an ugly picture of Monarch. Critters and such. Maybe someone in the promenade can get you the right weapon for the job. We see a lot of the same faces coming and going. Most of them board spies and corporate sprats. Makes it hard to trust outsiders. You seem different, so welcome aboard. Parvati, you wanted to ask Junli, go ahead. What? I didn't think you just. Parvati, is it? That's a lovely name. What can I do for you? I was just thinking, I haven't got much experience working with actual, real spaceships, Miss Junle. Uh, uh, Chief Junle. No need to be so formal, Pavardi. Force of habit, I guess. Um, okay. Since you run a whole space station, I was wondering if... Well, maybe you could teach me some things. I could message you later, maybe? I'd be happy to make the time, Pavardi. You can ask me anything. Pavardi, don't be shy about requesting time off if you need it to compare notes in person. Right. In person. Thing, Captain. Wow, great. I I'll do that then. Messages later. Oh, your your name's pretty too. I should have said sorry. I like it. Honest. Sorry. Stop being sorry. I have some other questions. Not a problem, Captain. Ask away. 
It seems kind of warm in here. What's going on? Groundbreaker's radiators need replacement parts. They're dumping superheated air into my ship. Why haven't you fixed them yet? Only the board has access to new parts, and I won't let them swindle me into a corner. Is there no room for compromise? None. Every time I give in to the board, Groundbreaker loses its freedom. Soon there won't be anything left. I can't allow that. The board isn't helping, and my resources are spread thin. If I don't get those radiators back online, Groundbreaker, everyone aboard, will be cooked alive. You need a contractor to work this out. I'm available for a reasonable rate. Reasonable, huh? That's the best news I've heard all day. According to my grandmother's old schematics, the parts we need should be in the back bays. How do you know the parts are still there? I keep diligent records of station repairs, requisitions, and available assets, just like my grandmother taught me. The station's radiators haven't changed since her time, and her records say the parts should be there. I trust them. Got it. I'll take care of that right now. Hold on. There's something you should know before you go charging off. The back bays are on a lower deck, long abandoned, and a haven for miscreants now. Have you tried sending anyone else down there to get the parts? I have. One of my engineers, plus a small security detail. They didn't come back. I can't afford to lose any Mardits on this job. No offense, but a freelancer like you is more dispensable. None taken. Nice and pragmatic. Thanks for understanding. Talk it over with my crew and I'll get back to you. Let's do this one next. Ike's armor BNP Borson baked beans. When you need to eat and run, Borson baked beans is the only one. Are you listening to me, Emperu? You can't get me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not making a scene. Something I can help you with? Nah. Take care. Not what I'm looking for. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Wheeler told me you're... Oh no. Wheeler says your shipment won't be coming in anytime soon. He must be referring to Erion. I'm sure the fool's gotten himself into another scrape. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm ever going to get my service mechanicals at this rate. Who's Erion? Our delivery man. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. Sometimes by dates, and usually by bandits. I can try to find him. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. He made his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. I'm 
sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. What's this about your friend? Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Hey, you don't even like her, but you're checking on her? You say that like it's weird. It's uh, none of my business, but I was curious. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Maybe I could look in on Jesse. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. A quest objective requires you to enter a restricted area. If you're caught inside, you will be shot on sight. Using a disguise will prevent immediate hostilities. Well, I'm going to stop for this week. Have a good